Hello, my name is Charlene Carla. Welcome to NASA. This is my Narcissistic Abuse Survivor Autobiography, where I share my testimony to help you along your healing journey. Now today, ladies and gentlemen, is a brand new year, 2023. So because it is a new year, I wanted to begin this new year of videos with a new set of narcissistic entities because remember, they're everywhere, <laughs> okay? So you see my shirt today, it says Christ over career. Got this from Cami Arnett Production Studios. So today we're going to be talking about narcissists in the workplace. <laughs> So if you're as old as I am, <laughs> and you've been working since you were a teenager, now, again, you can look back and say, hmm, I think that manager was a narcissist, okay? And you guys have heard me talk about Shannon Savoy, Narc Free Living. So she is married to Solomon Savoy, a faith-based workplace. So if you want to get a whole boatload of videos about how to deal with narcissists in the workplace go on over to his channel faith based workplace i've had to do that a few times almost getting stressed out dealing with these people okay so you know we're going to begin in the word you know bible says you know we're surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses you know everything there's nothing new under the sun okay so everything in the bible we can look back in the Bible, look at our lives today and say, you know what, there's a story about this. So today we are going to be talking about Jacob and Laban. Remember, uh, Laban is Jacob's father-in-law. He tricked him, huh? Sounds like something a narcissist would do. Manipulated him into marrying Leah first because she was the oldest daughter, even though Jacob loved Rachel. That's who he thought he was marrying. He was deceived. And then Jacob's doing, you know, Laban is doing all this crazy manipulative stuff to get him to, oh, work seven more years and work seven more years and work for these wages and do this and do that. Again, something that, you know, in our career, narcissistic manager would do. So we're going to go back again, Old Testament, Genesis chapter 31, verses four through seven. And Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to the field unto his flock and said unto them, I see your father's countenance that it is not toward me as before, but the God of my father hath been with me. And ye know that with all my power, I have served your father and your father hath deceived me and changed my wages 10 times. But God suffered him not to hurt me. Do you, do you see all the but God, but God? So if you are still working under a narcissist, some, some of us have to, okay? And so we just have to learn how to deal with them. But there is a but God because God sees everything. He's omniscient, he's omnipresent, okay? He, he, he's omnipotent, he's all-knowing, all-seeing, he hears everything. So he knows what that narcissistic manager is trying to do. You see, Jacob's like, yo daddy, over here trying to deceive me, changing my wages, I'm like, okay? So you know I have stories. You know I have stories about this which is in the workplace, okay? So I'm gonna start, and I don't know if there's gonna be a part B, because when I started thinking about this one particular manager, all of a sudden, all these other managers popped up all over in my brain. And, and even customers and clients too. And, and but I'm, I'm, I'm letting you guys know there's hope. Because just like if you're in a narcissistic family, if you're in a narcissistic relationship, once you realize what you're dealing with, then you know 
how to respond or how not to respond at all. Just to keep your own brain in the right spot. So it's a learning process. And so, uh, you know, me, let me tell myself, you know that because I don't want, again, the accuser of the brethren telling on me. And so um, God had to remind me a couple of times, at, you know, again, I've been working since I was 16. So a couple of times God had to remind me, uh, you need to calm down working for these folks because they know that you're a Christian. Didn't have a shirt a couple weeks ago talking about act like a Christian. Okay, so especially with people know that you're Christian, the people that you're working with and working for, they're going to test you. Because they're going to test you, okay? Because Satan's like, oh, Lord, look at little Charlene, little intercessor watchman on the wall, Charlene. Look how she's yelling and slamming doors and slamming the phone down and stomping through the office. Telling on myself, people. That's what I was doing every, at church every Sunday. But that that's how I was acting in the workplace. And... And this, as a woman, as a woman, I hate to say this, but it's the truth for me. I've really only had issues with female bosses. Tell me in the comments. I, that's it. The dudes who've been over me, Chilling, straight, got favor, raises, promotions from the men. The women, Lord have mercy. Completely different story. I don't know what it is. I don't know if there was just too much estrogen in the office. I don't know if it's like, you know, in, in your home, in your family, there can really only be like one head chick in the house. Okay, you cannot have two women trying to run one household because somebody has to decide this is what the decor is going to be. This is what we're having for dinner. This is what the kids are going to wear. Can only be one chicken charge. So I, I don't know if the, I don't know what the problem is, but literally I've only had issues with female bosses. <laughs> oh, this only goes. So this one chick, she was the worst. And literally, like, you know, as soon as I started uh, learning about narcissism, her name and her face popped up into my brain. And I was like, oh, that was the issue. This is who she really was. Um, this woman, she would just drive onto the property, okay, of the building and... The entire, like everybody, not just me, the entire office would be like, oh gosh, she's here today. Oh man, it was like a black cloud. Remember I said how oh, that black cloud envelops them? That black cloud sometimes envelops the place where they are, okay? If you, if you have a witch in the workplace, if you are dealing with a narcissistic boss, you, you gotta be prayed up. You have to have on the whole armor of God. You have to pray. <laughs> Lord, I need your angels to go before me, to go with me, to be my rear guard. As I'm going into this office, okay? You got to plead the blood of Jesus over in the entire office. You don't need to tell people what you're doing. You may have to bring some oil with you. Anoint a couple of doorways. I do whatever you have to do, okay? That That's not breaking the rules. Just so you can work in peace. So this chick, um, she was married to the owner, right? It was two male owners and their wives were like, you know, officers or whatever, but she was like the office manager, okay? And so I came in, I'm just, lit, I'm just a little old administrative assistant. I'm just proofreading appraisals. I'm just doing admin stuff. That's it. I'm not trying to take over the office. I'm not, come on, just calm down. But you know, I'm like um, ordering all of the office supplies, right? That's my job. Let me, let me do my job. 
Did you let me do my job? No. No, she didn't. She would literally go behind me, look at what I bought and said, why did you buy this? And I'm sending this back and you shouldn't have got this from this place. And I'm shopping like I would shop for myself. I'm using coupons, I'm using rewards, I'm shopping around for the best price for your company. And you are checking behind me. Okay. Okay. She would do things, and this is the worst part. She would do things like, um, okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not a morning person, okay? Please don't ever call me at 8 a.m. because I'm not awake. And if I am awake, it's because I haven't gone to bed yet because I'm a night owl, okay? So, I'm sorry. It just, if I have to clock in at 9 a.m., that is... I may be clocking in at 9.05. That's just, I'm sorry. I just can't get up. I'm just not motivated. Okay, so anyways. So, telling myself again, no, I was not there clocking in at 9 a.m. every day. I was not. Sorry, I was not. I don't mind telling you guys that. Um, but I also don't mind working all the hours I'm supposed to work, right? So, this is a full-time job. I was like, Probably there for like two and a half years, almost three years again. That's the degree. And I was out and became self employed. Praise the Lord. So, um, it's a full time job, 40 hours a week. If I'm late, I'm going to make up that time. I'm, that's fine. I'm not trying to get free minutes from you people. Okay. I, I will work my 40 hours. How about? <laughs> this woman would not let me. At some point, it just started out nice. Don't they always, in any type of narcissistic relationship, she started out nice, and I thought she was on my side, but she really wasn't. So she started out, we're fine, you know, I literally, I, it was a pan-written time card, okay, not even punching, clocking in. And I'm the only person, write this down, I'm the only person in the office who's like a, you know, W-2 employee who, you know, the owner was like, you're the only person who's going to get a guaranteed um, paycheck every week. Okay, that's the type of company it was. Everybody else is on commission, right? So maybe she's jealous about that. I don't know. Anyways, so not like they, you know, not like I'm making more than them. I'm just making money every week. Anyways, so it's a full-time job. So she started out, no issues with my paycheck, right? Then all of a sudden, again, I'm writing, writing down. I'm honest. She's not even there, ladies and gentlemen. Write this down. She's not even there every day. Thank God. She's not even there every day. I'm the first person in the office, the last person out of the office, basically every day. So nobody really knows what time I'm coming and what time I'm going. But I'm honest. Still a child of God, okay? I'm honest. If I came in at 9.03, I'm going to tell you I came in at 9.03. I have no problem with that. So she was cool at first with that. And I would either just take a shorter lunch or literally stay three minutes later, okay, um, to make sure I'm working eight hours a day. So at some point, that, that wasn't enough for her because she's a narcissist. And she's trying to change my wages 10 times like LeBan did to Jacob. So then she's bust out with you can't make up your time anymore Christ over career people okay you've probably heard that saying you know God over everything yeah Christ over career okay Christ is way more important so she bust out with you know you can't make up your time anymore if you're late you're just late okay so I emailed her. Get stuff in writing, people. I learned that. Documentation. It's like if you're in a relationship with a narcissist and you got to go to court and stuff like that. Document everything. So I emailed her and I said, simple question. Simple question. 
is this a full-time job? Now, th I've already been there for months, okay? Because she didn't start this crazy change in wages stuff, you know, for a while. So I've been there for a while. So I said, is this a full-time job? She never, when I say never, I was there again almost three years. She never answered me. I'm not a simple question. Either it is or it isn't. But she never answered me. Because if she had said, yes, it is a full-time job. You're supposed to be working 40 hours a week. Then I would have said, then let me. So from that day forward, my timesheet no longer said 40 hours. My timesheet started saying 39.27, 38.49. Like it was never 40 hours because it can't hard for me to get up in the morning and then what's sad is that now I, I've been laid off twice before if I haven't mentioned it before I've been laid off twice being in the mortgage industry and then another company and so um I I used to cry okay I was laid off for eight months both times so I used to be in tears when I didn't have a job so when I got this job I was happy at first but then I was in tears going to this job. Just because of his check. She was like a, a pit bull. I just felt like every time, when I say every time, every time she came to the office, she was just attacking me. Every time, for no reason. No reason. But again, we're not provoking these narcissists. We're not. They're just waking up in the morning and saying, I think I want to have, you know, an episode today. I think I want to, you know, like have, you know, some narcissistic rage today. Yay. Let me just try to ruin everybody else's day. That's what they're doing. But, remember the but God. Remember the but God. But God suffered him not to hurt me. God suffered her not to hurt me. So, okay, fine. My check is now based on 39.27 hours instead of 40 hours. Never. As soon as, as soon as she started messing with my money, the Lord started messing with her money, with the business money. Now, I, I'm the admin. I'm getting the mail. I'm getting the checks. I know what we're supposed to be getting and I know what we're not getting, right? And she didn't like that either because I'm an intelligent woman and I used to do accounting too, lady. Okay? So all of a sudden, their checks started to dwindle. Okay? They literally got less business. Uh, checks just were just coming in slower and slower and there was just less money coming in to the point where one day, I remember this day, she came in and she asked me, hey, did we get any checks today? And I said, no. And she was like, Dang. And I don't gloat, ladies and gentlemen, don't gloat. When God, vengeance is mine, say the Lord. But don't gloat. We don't have to. Ah, ha, 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 ha. We don't have to do that. We know they're going to reap what they sow. We don't have to, you know, come back at them or be happy that they're now suffering because they're trying to make us suffer. So, but I thought in my mind, like, yeah, because you're messing with my money, now something's happening to your money. You should not have messed with my money. Okay, so again, don't worry about the narcissists if it seems like they're, um, just, you know, living La Vida Loca on the beaches in Hawaii and Jamaica. If it seems like they're going to Paris and Dubai every week, don't worry about it. Half of the stuff is a lie and the other half doesn't matter. It's not going to last. Whatever. Don't worry about it. 
would start happening. And it kept on happening because she didn't get any better treating me any better. She, it, it got worse, okay? Because then she really started realizing, uh-oh. Again, she's acting like we're in a household and I'm trying to take over her wifely duties or her motherly duties. Lady, I'm just there trying to get a paycheck. So stop, okay? Stop in my name above. Okay. So she's doing stuff like, um, um, I had to, I knew, now mind you, let me tell you something. I had my um, letter of resignation typed and ready to go probably like a year, almost a year before God released me. That's another thing, ladies and gentlemen, I learned. Don't go, don't leave, don't run away until God releases you. Jacob didn't leave in the middle of his seven years of work in this and seven years of work for that. He didn't leave. Laban is changing his wages and doing all this crazy stuff. He didn't leave until God said, leave. Okay, that is the key. It, it, relationship, when you can't take anymore, God, get me out of here. Again, God will make a way of escape. Okay, even with your family members, God will say, now go no contact, or now go great rock, or now, you know, absolutely, no matter what, set up those boundaries, okay? But you don't leave, especially in a job, until God says, as you can sit there, if, you, if, if you're able, remember that God is our foundation, the word is our foundation, Jesus is our foundation, Christ of a career, okay? We're holding on to God's unchanging hand. So... If we stay stable, solid, on the rock, okay, God will move other people. He'll move your manager to another department. He'll move you to another division. He'll promote you, even though they're trying to bust out with smear campaigns against you. Get documentation. Get stuff in writing, especially when you realize Okay, I'm dealing with the narcissist. Email, email, text, what letters, in ink, in whatever, in a crayon, whatever. Get this stuff in writing so you have proof to go to HR. If you gotta go to HR, go to HR. The company that I was with, that company was so small, there was no HR. It's just like she's the office manager. There's like less than 10 of us, okay? So. At some point, again, I, I'm like, God, get me out of here because this woman is like upsetting me to the point where I want to choke her. Absolutely. So I had to, she wanted me to do, update the procedures and processes or whatever. I was taking my time. I was really taking my time because I knew walking out the door, there was no rush. What did you need it for? Nothing. Thank you. So I'm taking my time. I'm like, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. It's nothing that had to be, I wasn't being disobedient or, or, or you know, sub, un, insubordinate or any crazy thing like that. I'm taking my time because I can, okay? Again, she didn't like that. She didn't like that I was improving processes. I was changing stuff. She didn't like that. She did not like that. Um, I remember her saying, well, you know, that's not how we do it. That's not how we've done it before. We've always done it like this. And I'm just like, but my way is better. Amen. Yeah, you should be happy. When people improve processes for your company, improve efficiency, you should be happy. She wasn't. Okay, fine. But anyways, I, I did finish that before I left because it didn't need to be done before I left. You know, that, that manual. Okay. Um, she, the, the office was, was completely casual. Like the, one of the owners walked around barefoot in shorts and a t-shirt. Okay. If you didn't have to go out and see clients. So I, hmm, especially when I knew I had to have meetings with this woman because she was just acting a fool, just acting a fool. Um, I would, but remember I'm from Cali, right? I bust out with like dressed 
like I'm going to a gang fight. Do you hear me? <laughs> With like, you know, bandana on and, and everything like colors, like, like I was ready to fight just in case this woman like lost it. That's why I would come to, cause I was just like, you are getting on my nerves. I don't like you. But again, God is like, behave, Charlene. He's talking to me. Behave. Because that, but God, God already knows. I'm going to take care of them. Wait on me. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Wait, I say, on the Lord. God will take care of your enemies. God will handle the narcissists in your life. You don't have to fight them. Not in the natural. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. This is a spiritual battle. You fight them in the spirit. Okay. So again, she's still messing with my money. Okay, fine. Messing with me. Okay, fine. One day her and the other two owners are like ganging up on me, you know, and standing over me in front of my desk. I'm just in there like, I had to tell them, uh, I have work to do. You guys are trying to attack me personally. She got mad. She got mad that she sent me an email and I didn't respond. I don't even remember why or what it was about. She got mad about that. Now, mind you, never. I had sent her that email about the how is this a full-time job that she never responded to. So I'm like, you're mad at me. You're coming to my desk with the owners because I'm ignoring. Remember, they don't like to ignore. I'm ignoring your email. And I was like, but you ignored my email. What's the difference? Because they're going back and forth on emails with me saying that I'm sensitive. I'm being sensitive. How many times? Tell me in the comments. How many times have you heard that from a narcissist? Oh, you're just too sensitive. You just, oh, calm down. I was just joking. Well, I didn't mean it like that. You know I didn't, but what's your problem? You're the crazy one. Remember, we're the fruitcakes. Remember, we're not. So she's, she's doing all this crazy stuff. And so towards the end, I was like, I'm not even talking to you. Talking to the owners. Remember, one of the owners is her husband. Ahab. Okay? So he has to do whatever Jezebel says. Okay? Again, remember, Jezebel is a spirit. It's not a gender, male or female. I just happen to deal with all female narcissistic bosses. Okay. You got me up to do a part B just to talk about the other chicks that I've dealt with before. And some clients. So I remember telling them, you know, now mind you, I have to say this. I'm the only brown person in the office. And I'm saying that because they thought that I thought that that's why she was treating me like this. They were waiting for me to say that. They wanted me to play the race card. They wanted me to. And they, now they're, Everybody's pretending to be Christian, again, just like me, and I'm not acting like it, right? So me and the two dudes, again, one of them I had favor with, I was chilling with, right? And so I said, you know what? I said, I know why all of this is happening. I know. And they're like, why? Tell us, tell us why. They wanted me to use a race card, I know it. And I didn't, because that literally, I knew that was not the issue at all. And everybody loved me, and I loved everybody. It was just her. So I said, I told them, I said, well, you guys are Christian. Ask God if you want to know why. I said, because that's what I did. And he told me. So I'm not going to tell you. You ask him, why is this happening with our poor little executive admin, Charlene? Why is she being treated like this? You ask him. And I told them. Because the, the, the one owner that did like me, you know, because he wasn't being controlled by Jezebel. That was not his wife. He was like, you know what? I really love you. I really love the work that you do for us. He said, but I would rather you leave than 
be here and be miserable. He told me that. And I was like, you know what? I am leaving. Don't worry. I said, and I will give you a two week notice. And then I want you guys to give me a party and I want somebody to give me a chocolate cake. And I got that. You have not because you asked not. He literally made me a chocolate cake because I asked for it. But they got their two weeks notice. January 1st, 2015, New Year's. I, remember, I already had the letter of resignation typed up. And I printed that sucker out and put it on the three desk. Everybody got a copy. Because I said, I'm not walking into that new year. That was 2015, January 2015. I said, I'm not walking into this new year stuck in this mess. I had no, could not spell narcissist. Had no idea what I was dealing with. I just knew, I knew that there was stuff in me. Remember, unhealed impact. I knew there was stuff in me um, that I needed to work through. Uh, things that, again, the things kept happening at different jobs. And I know I'm part of the problem. I knew I was. Again, remember, with Cookie Monster, it, the open door was my sin, remember? So, you know, dealing with these people, I'm just like, okay, so I'm not acting like a Christian. So the enemy just wreaking havoc in here, but I don't know <laughs> the extent of what's really going on. These narcissists, demonic, remember? Oh my goodness. So yeah, they got their two weeks notice and I got my chocolate cake and my party, okay? But before that, right before that, because God was not going to let them hurt me. God knows everything. Remember I told you their money started going down. This started going down. Business started going down. To the point where they had to split the company. But I, God had already said, you're leaving. And I'm going to tell you exactly when to go. So I was already one foot out the door. So when we're in the meeting and they're telling us this, hey, we got to split the company. We got to sell this building. Half of you are going to go with this owner. The other half are going to go with that owner. And I'm just sitting at the desk like, it's because of how this woman treated me. Because God, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, even though, even though I'm sinning, just like David was sinning, Moses did some stuff he shouldn't have done. You know what I'm saying? It, we're, 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 we're still sons of God. We're still children of the most high God. And he's like, you're my child. You messed up. Repent. Get up. You know, righteous man falls seven times and get back, gets back up again. So even though I'm sinning, but God is teaching me and showing me, hey, you can't do this anymore. You can't act like this anymore. You can't say this anymore. Um, I knew that was their punishment for messing with me, for trying to change my wages and times. Trying to manipulate me, trying to gaslight me, trying to do smear campaigns against me, trying to deceive me, lying to me, lying about me. I knew that that's what happened, that that's why their company is now, it's gone now. I don't even know if either one of these guys is still in business, but they had to split. And the, again, the nice owner was like, I would love for you to come work for me. And I'm just like, I'm out. I'm out. Because by that point, I'm like, I am self-employed because I can't deal with this anymore. I can't deal with this. And you think, again, you think you escaped. Okay, narcissism. You think you escaped the pit bulls growling and barking at you. But they're everywhere. So even if you leave this job at McDonald's, you're gonna find some more narcissists at the next job at Wendy's. They're everywhere, okay? So the key is to make sure you are healed and that you know how to respond when these narcissists attack you and when they do the smear campaign and when they lie about you, when they lie to you, when they try to manipulate you, you have to, let me put up those boundaries. 
let me let me put on the whole armor of God. Let me plead the blood of Jesus. Let me make sure that Michael, the archangel, and the whole host of heaven of God's angels are fighting on my behalf. Let me make sure I'm reading all those Psalms. Remember that God is my defense. God sees everything. God knows everything. God hears everything. You are not alone. You're not even being punished. But like me, I had to learn a lesson. I had to keep, God keep, God had to keep saying, okay, I need you to chill. I know how she's treating you. I need you to chill. Okay. You don't, have, we're not going to for that with these people. We're not going to argue. If they're arguing. We're not going to argue. If they're raising their voice. We're not going to raise our voice. It doesn't, and it doesn't help. Ladies and gentlemen, you will not win an argument with a narcissist. You have to walk away. Oh, I, I I was unprofessional when I did that. My bad. Walk away. There's no point in going back and forth. You're just going to be in a big old bowl of word salad with no dressing. Who wants to eat salad with no dressing? It won't taste good. Okay? So, yeah, it's fine. But that's what happened. And so the company split. Now, but after, I'm already gone. But, but right before I left, remember, they've already made plans to split. So they didn't split before I left. God's like, I'm removing you. And then I'm going to do what I got to do to them. Um, and it took them forever just to sell the building that, that, that they were at forever. Because I had to drive by, you know, to go different places. And I would drive by and go, man, it's still for sale, man. It's still for sale. And I, again, no gloating. I was like, ha, ha, ha. I was just like, man. Don't, don't treat God's people badly. Don't, just don't, <laughs> just don't. Even if you are God's people, don't treat other God's people badly. Cause God sees everything. Elroy, I think that's the God who sees. As Hagar, God sees everything. Okay? So you don't have to fight that battle. You may have to show up to the battle, but you don't have to fight. I guess I used to slam doors at some previous offices that I was at, slam the phone down, run out the door, yelling and scream. I was acting a fool. I was the Christian. I, but Christ over career. Christ is bigger than our career. Okay, and our career may be our ministry. Christ is in charge. We're supposed to be working unto the Lord. So, if there's any witches at your workplace, <laughs> you got to get in the word. You got to make sure you're right so that God will be on your side. Again, thank you so much for watching this video, for liking and sharing it. Thank you for being on my channel, for subscribing to my channel, for hitting that notification bell for leaving positive comments to encourage other people. If you need to contact me directly again, take up that sword.com. You've got some stories about some narcissistic bosses. You don't have to put it in the comments so that they, you know, in case they're monitoring you. Okay. Email me directly. All right. Go on over to faith based, faith based workplace. Check out those videos and get some strategies. You need a strategy in the natural and in the spirit. Spirit first. Then you'll have the strength to do what you need to do in the natural. I will see you guys next week. You be blessed and you be safe.